everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Rebecca and welcome back to part two of my deck collection. Uh, we're just going to jump right in. If you missed part one, it is up in the cards above where you can click on it and go watch that first. Our tally so far is we are up to 16 decks, can, including both Tarot and Oracle. And the style I'm taking as I do this is I am, I am rambling at you. Look guys, bag in a bag. So I'm using this video to share my deck collection and just talk to you about my decks and how I'm feeling about them to kind of gather my thoughts about my collection. So in this bag, I have two copies of the Oracle of the Radiant Sun. That happened because of a um, because of a shipping delay and me being impatient and me trying to cancel something, but it showed up anyways. Um, I do have this one edged. So if you're unfamiliar with this deck, you probably are though. It has, it has cards for all the traditional planets and astrology. I've edged it in different colors for each planet. I need to redo the edging on these two so it's a more distinct difference because the it, it just ended up being too similar so I need to redo that but I like the pastelliness of it I used this deck for a year straight in 2021 with my year ahead spread reading that I was testing with some friends slash clients at the time and it's a really cool deck and as I started to get better and better and better at reading intuitively I started to get increasingly frustrated at having to use the guidebook for this deck so this deck is temporarily on break um and by that I mean, while I study more astrology, I am going to, I'm taking a break from using this deck because I'm hopeful that as I get more knowledgeable and able to just speak the language of astrology, I'll be able to better speak the language of this deck. I love the size of it. I love how many cards it has. I love that it is an astrology deck with implications of astrology use because I love astrology and so I don't think it's going to go anywhere it's the oracle of the radiant sun and the other thing is to the next one coming up is by the same people so I have like a set going on so I'm I don't think I'm going to be getting rid of this I'm not a hundred percent sure and each different planet has a different banner at the bottom. And I just love it. I do love this deck very much. And my I have two copies and I only edged one. And I was using my edged copy. So eventually it finally occurred to me, oh, Rebecca, you could put them in their e each in their own individual bags. So that way they don't get mixed up in the big bag. And so finally I did that because I'm a genius. And that's in my astrology bag because, duh. So that's two more decks, technically speaking. Um, and like I said, these ones are like, they're on break. And the one of the reasons I don't want to get rid of them is because I have what feels like a match for them. This is one of my favorite bags. Like, look at that fabric. It's fucking gorgeous. I have by the same couple, by Carolyn Smith and John Astrop, I have the Moon Oracle. Sorry about the glare. And this deck, I am very bonded to. I used to use this deck for my personal moon readings. Whenever there was a full moon or a new moon, I would use this deck. And I used it exclusively for myself. 
It's got, these are the mansions of the moon cards. It's got moon face cards and it's got goddess cards. And I decided I wanted to try, I had a second copy that I sent to, um, that I sent to someone and I, I decided I wanted to try using these for actual like moon readings and then like it, it was like the deck got mad at me <laughs> or I was mad at myself for breaking this very private intimate personal bond I had with this deck so I have no intention of getting rid of this and that's kind of why I'm thinking I'm not going to get rid of these because like they go together and then there's the elemental tarot which goes with this which I'm thinking on getting I had that pre-ordered but it didn't like come out on time and then I got mad and shit but this oracle deck I, I love it I've had some really amazing readings with it so maybe maybe I'll I'll use it again for for readings maybe I'll explore doing some moon readings I'm I've been feeling kind of stale with my moon readings um I have a set of decks that I use together for, I, you will have heard, I, I use my Heavenly Bodies Astrology deck and my um, Star Seeker Tarot together for a lot of astrological based readings. But I've been feeling, and I like those for like my moon returns, and but I've been feeling a bit more stagnant like it not with those readings just with like when I do those readings for myself I feel like I lose some of my flow because they're so structured like they feel a bit too structured and I feel like I need them to be a bit more flowy feeling so maybe I can do something with this um to kind of get that flow going I don't know so maybe I'll be using this for personal moon readings again um I don't know but it's not going anywhere I adore this bag very much and I adore that these like go together I really like when things go together I'm a nerd so there's those ones Next up is another oracle deck. I do have more oracle decks than tarot decks. I think. Last count. Oh, and it is the Brian Froud's Fairies Oracle. I got this one last year. Let's... There we go. And... Okay, there. There it is. That That works. We're kind of out of the glare zone, but it's still good. I got this one last year. Whoops. And it also has very flimsy cardstock. But I did know that. Um, I am very excited to spend some time getting to know this deck. Another reason I struggle so much and there's nudity in it is I don't quite know how to study decks like I don't have a set way to study the decks that I don't just want to use all the time right I'm gonna try reading through guidebooks I think that could be helpful um but I don't I don't know this deck very well I've pulled a few cards and it's been really great but I haven't spent a lot of time with it. Maybe I'll use it like for August with my monthly medicine, uh, with my Tarot of the She. Because this feels like a late summer. This feels like a harvesty kind of deck. I'm not getting rid of it. I'm just still getting to know it. That's that puppy. Oh, I need... 
I haven't, I don't use these bags by choice, y'all. I just, I haven't found the right bag for it yet. And unlike Lisa, I don't live with a Peggy, so there's not an endless supply of bags that I can just grab extra ones and put things in bags until I get one that I like better. So I, I make do. And I also think too, like... Once I've gotten a deck of bag, it's like I'm 100% keeping you. Um, with certain exceptions. Because, like, for instance, some decks, which you'll see later, I don't like to keep in bags. Because I use them so much that I, I don't want to be fumbling taking them in and out of a bag all the time. Right? Um, some of them, when they're in a nice, small, compact box that's really pretty, I like just leaving them in their box. This is the Embody Oracle, which I got from a friend, and I used every day for a while. And I'm unsure. I'm really unsure about this. I I think there's a chance I could end up finding a way I like to use it. I also think there's a chance I could end up rehoming it. I I truly don't know. Um I really liked it at first and then I just kind of was like, okay, I've used it. Now I'm done. So, I just don't know yet. If that's an I'm done, permanently I'm done, or if that's just like I'm not doing the kind of work that requires this deck right now. I, I don't know. But that is the Embody Oracle. So I guess that's your hint that if I have this, if I have a, if I have a deck in a non-Peggy bags, it could be a sign that I'm not keeping it. I mean, minus... I mean, mine is, like, some of them I just haven't found bags for yet. And mine is ones like this. This is my illustrated bestiary. Which, as I mentioned in the part one, when I talked about my illustrated herbiary, I am not getting rid of this. That's not happening. You cannot pry this out of my dead hands. You, you couldn't, if you tried, pry this out of my cold, dead hands. I love this. I'm... It's in one of these bags because it, it came with bags and I was using those bags. And then I used one of those bags to make a spell for a friend. And so I don't have the bag anymore, so I stuck it in a different blue bag. I'm gonna be... I plan to be... This is... Ooh... I'm going to put this card aside um, because I feel like I should read about it. I'm going to be finding a way that I like to work with these decks. I just haven't found that yet. And I, I don't know. But I will. I'm not going. It's not going anywhere. You can't have it. It's too fucking pretty. I don't care, honestly. If I if I barely ever use these, but I just take them out once in a while and pull a card because it's fucking pretty, that's fine with me. It's pretty enough that I'm good with that. And, um, hello, have you seen the books? Anyways, so that's the illustrated bestiary by Maya Toll. Here we have one that, again, I'm, I'm hopeful about. I'm hopeful about this. This is the Enchanted Blossoms Oracle. And it is fascinating. It has, on each deck, it has a flower, it has a dragon, and it has a butterfly that all mingled together for the message. So if you like if you look in the book, 
Oh, I stopped on strength. How appropriate. That's my card. Flower is fennel. The butterfly is the back, black swallowtail. So it listens, lists both of those. And then it gives you a message and then it gives you journaling prompts. I am very hopeful about this deck. I got one of these cards um, with my Witch's Moon box in 2020. And I fell in love and because they're fucking, they're dragonflies. They're dragon butterflies. And so I bought it and it, the cardstock's really nice. Um, and I've tried using it a few times and it's really good for just pulling a card. But I don't do a lot of just like random pull a card things. Um, so I mean... I'm very, very hopeful. And, okay, to be honest, it's not just hopeful. I'm determined to find a way to use this deck because it is so adorable. I love it so much. Furthermore, I want the Garden Dragons Oracle. So, because that's fucking adorable. Anyways, that's my Enchanted Blossoms. I might end up giving it to my spouse, maybe, and just, like, using it whenever I want to pull a card. Because my spouse is getting the smoke, ash, and embers. So, we shall see. Okay, y'all. Oh. This one's hard. I don't, I don't know. Let's get it down in the non-glare spot. This is the Ostara Tarot. Okay. Good. It's not glary. And y'all, I, I don't know what to, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know. I just bought this. I bought this specifically to go with my Seed and Sickle Oracle. So spoiler alert, I do have that. You will be seeing it. I bought it specifically for that. And the cards go beautifully together. And I've wanted this deck for a while. And it is a collab deck, and it's a collab between four people, which doesn't bother me so much until I get to a card I don't like. Like this. These are gorgeous. I'm, I'm really sorry. This art of the magician, it's not my thing. I don't like this art. I don't feel anything with this card. This High Priestess kind of bothers me, but that's just me. This, this is one of my favorite cards, and I'm pissed off because the day I got it, shuffling my hand slipped and it damaged. And I love this image. It's one of the reasons I bought the deck was for that picture. So I, I do not know I don't know. I don't think I'm going to get rid of it because the art is so stunning. I like it. It's gorgeous. Like this one, it's not my favorite, but I still really love it. This one, look at it. Um, so like maybe I'll use it for an art project. I don't know. I just don't know. If you have the Ostara Tarot, did you have similar problems with it? Or, oh my god, look at this. Like, look. Oh my gosh. Did you have similar problems? How did you overcome them if you did? How do you get through this stumble if it's a stumble you have? Also, this, my copy, the gilding was all stuck together terribly. It was, it was a whole ass mess. So, I'm love this emperor so much and this justice i just don't know what to do with this now granted i haven't i haven't tried it for very long like i tr i tried using it in a monthly medicine prompt prompt yesterday so today is thursday the 
13th as I'm filming this. I tried using this yesterday in a monthly medicine prompt and I got mad at it and I put it away. It was just a big flat nope, which says a lot, but it's so pretty. I don't know what to do anyway. Um, but other than that, I haven't really tried reading with it, so I guess we'll see. In the meantime, in this bag is my Goddess Oracle. Now, don't be fooled by the lack of a Peggy bag for this. This, this beauty is not going to go anywhere because, again, I got this from my spouse, I feel like this deck might also be kind of on hold. I don't know. I'm not getting rid of it. I'll find something to do with it because it, it, it was a gift from my spouse and I am not one to likely give up gifts from my spouse. And I love it, and it's beautiful, and it had such a profound effect on me. Um, I don't know. And part of the thing I don't know with this is I'm just, I'm feeling like maybe goddess work, at least right now, isn't for me. So I don't really know. If you're interested to see a video uh, where I talk about my my experience with goddess work to date and why I wonder if maybe it's not for me, uh, let me know down in the comments. Oh, quite like you. This is a very beautiful, amazing deck. I'm just... And I don't want to get rid of it because I guess this must be one that didn't get wet because this is a lot smoother where some of them get like stickier I just I don't know y'all I'm having issues with the I don't knows so this is one of my favorite cards so I'm going to be spending some time I, I'm I'm gonna kind of put this on hold put it away give it a break give it a nap and I the work I'm doing this year it's not things aren't leading me to goddesses right now and I specifically was after this deck well I wasn't after this deck I was after a different deck which you will see um but I specifically was after this deck for doing goddess work and for finding a goddess so it's kind of on hold Next up, can you guess what's in here? Pause the video and let me know in the comments down below. Guess what's in the bag? This is my Seasons of the Witch Yule Oracle. Look at the green. Fucking love it. This beauty is not going anywhere. I love this deck. I use it. So this is one of the card, uh, one of the decks I use with my Witch's Wisdom for my Wheel of the Year readings. I love them. They go so well together. I'm going to do a video of my fa deck families, like once they're complete, right? I don't know this super well because I don't do... I don't know. I didn't I didn't feel like using it for a bunch of readings throughout the month. Um I feel like I'm going to get to know it more this Yule season that comes up in 2022. But I don't really know it. Oh, the star. Follow the stars for they know best. Not to not too light, not too dark, a shimmer of what is coming next. But I love this. I'm not getting rid of it. And I do have the Beltane one on pre-order. So that way I will have the Beltane one, which I suspect I might use a bit more frequently than the other ones because 
I fucking love Beltane. My birthday is, is, um, like, my birthday is March 30th. I'm a very early spring baby. So, I love Beltane. Next up, we have the Moonology deck. This was a Yule present in 2020 from a friend of mine. Let the moon be your guide. This is the deck I used in my moon journal and setting it up, which is the setup of that is linked up above in the cards. I'm still unsure. I don't, and it was warped like this when I got it, which is annoying as fuck. I'm, I'm still unsure. I don't use it a lot, but then again, I wonder if maybe with the right deck, if I would use it, like with the right tarot deck. I don't know, but this is the Moonology deck, and I have it. I'm not planning to get rid of it, but it's kind of, it's kind of on the fence. I think it would take a lot. Um, I, I would have to, it's a moon deck. It says, let the moon be your guide. It would, it would take a lot. I would have to be 100% super sure before I got rid of this. Because not only is it a moon deck, but it's also, um, from one of my best friends. I, I haven't read the book, so maybe I'll get the book and read that and see if that helps me form some kind of relationship of how I want to work with it. Um, but I'm just a bit unsure at this moment. This video really, and, and this is why I wanted to do this, so I could talk to you all and work out feelings about things because there's a lot of I'm really not sure going on here. And given how much money I have spent on decks, I'm not super okay with that. I want to use what I have. Anyway, this is the Believe in Your Own Magic deck from Amanda Lovelace. I think it needs to be edged in a nice metallic rose gold Sharpie, but I haven't done that and I'm afraid to. I'm not likely getting rid of this. I don't, I had a it was very emotional when I got it. Getting a deck that has my body size and shape represented in it means a whole lot to me. And I know what I like to use this with. I like to use this with my This Might Hurt Tarot. I This deck is a really good um, empowering pick-me-up on the end of a reading. I just... I don't do a ton of random readings for myself. I do a lot of like, I do readings on the moons. I do readings on the wheel of the year holidays. I do readings. I'm, I'm trying to build up my practice more and do more readings. I think this along with the, this might hurt tarot, which I am, is never going anywhere. Um, will be one of my combinations for the monthly medicine. So that way I can get to know more what types of readings I might like to use them for. Like I, when I use, I was using the witch's wisdom for this month for January's and I've stopped because I was using it and I realized to myself, I already know how I like to use my witch's wisdom tarot. I like to use it on my wheel of the year readings. So why was I bothering getting to know it better? It already has its place and I don't need to fight that and I don't need to force myself to use it more. This is one of my favorite cards. If I don't feel like I need to, I would like to use it more, but I don't need to feel, I, I don't need to feel like I'm not using it enough because I use it eight times a year. Like, who cares? If that's when I use it and that's what I enjoy, fuck, fuck anything else that says it's inadequate. It's not. And so, but this deck, I know what stuff it's good at, but I don't really have 
I haven't really identified times in which I'm, I really want to say to myself, okay, you need some of this energy. And so using it for the monthly medicine with the This Might Hurt Tarot, which is the deck I like to pair it with, I think could be really, really helpful. So that's the Believe in Your Own Magic Oracle by Amanda Lovelace. We're actually getting pretty close. Next up, the Seasons of the Witch Samhain Oracle. I bet you guys saw this coming because I have the other one and I was talking about this, using it with my Witch's Wisdom. Red. Now, I have not used this yet. I got this at the end of the year after. I got this after I got the Yule Oracle, after Samhain was already over. So I haven't used it. But that is the season which I intend to use it. I, I like, I like the reliability of knowing when it's time I have this to pick up. But I have a variety of different things I use for different occasions and that's where I get my variety. So I really like that. So I like this. It goes really well with my Seasons of the Witch or, or, or it goes really well with my Witch's Wisdom Tarot. I love Samhain. It's my favorite time of year. This red is my favorite color. I am here for this. And I love this dark. I love it. So I don't have any personal experiences with it yet. And I, I think there might be, oh, look at that card. I think there might be times in which I pull this out anyways. Like if I'm, if I'm really feeling something that feels like this energy, I might still pull it out, but I don't know. But you know what? Maybe, maybe the themes will line up for the monthly medicine so I can use this with my witch's wisdom for for October and then I can use the Yule one with the Witch's Wisdom for December or something like that or maybe I'll just use the Oracle cards like I but that would be really cool hopefully the themes line up anyway that's that one I mentioned that I had this so I have this I trimmed it by hand and then I edged it in a black and I hated it. So I trimmed it again. It is horribly uneven, but I don't mind. And it fits in my hands better. I love that it's a circle. I used this for a while. This is the Kim Kranz's Wild Unknown Archetypes Oracle. I love how beefy it is, like how many cards there are. I love also the reading in the guidebook. Um, I don't remember what that reading is called, but I love it. And I've used that quite a few times. This has given me several ass kickings. But again, I'm not, I'm not using it anymore right now. Because a big problem I'm having is now that I've I've gotten to the point where I, I know how to identify the decks that I will grab and that I will throw down and I'll just be able to read cards and it just flows. I'm hesitant or I'm more hesitant to go for the decks that take more effort. Even though they still have things to teach me. So... I want to get to know this deck more this year. This is the one of the ones on the list that I'm hoping to pick. Like I said, it'd be really cool to use this with my animal, with my wild unknown animal spirits, with the wild unknown tarot for a month for um, monthly medicine. And now that I've thought of that idea, and I think it would be in the later half of the year, um, because this doesn't feel very February. Um, this might be a combination I would use in like January, but it's January right now and I don't have the correct decks, but this, I had a very, I, I had, I used this 
for pulling monthly cards or quarterly cards and it was really quite profound I was learning lots um, so yeah I want to learn from this more and maybe I'll pick one a month or something I have no clue but this is my favorite card so the goal is for this one is to get to know it more and like I said with the animal spirit guides or the animal spirit uh, deck it's one I need more time with and I want to get the wild unknown tarot to go with it to work with them all together as a family one sec this one I feel like this one is not going to stay this is the Prisma Visions Tarot. It is the sixth edition with the Tiny Elephants card, which, FYI, if I ever do get rid of this deck, I'm keeping the Tiny Elephants card because I love elephants. This is by James R. Eads. It is a beautiful deck. And I got this at the same time I got the Cosmo Visions and the Geomantic Visions. I got them all. And I have tried, I think twice I've used it for my daily pulls. And I'm just not feeling it. Like, it just, some of the cards are, they're gorgeous. And I looked at this online, but I kept saying no to myself. And I think I should have listened to that. Um, some of the art is gorgeous but it's very hard on my eyes it's very hard for me to see and to pick out the detail it gets really blurry and it hurts and quite honestly i feel like the cosmovisions is my james r eads deck so spoiler you're gonna see that one too um but i feel like this one is not holding up the thing I'm not the thing I am still going to try to do before I get rid of it is I want to a I'm gonna see if did I put the tiny elephants back in here I'm not sure that's what I'm looking for right now because I love that little I I I literally very likely bought this deck just for the tiny elephants card which i have somewhere hmm. um but i don't know where it is it's not in here anyways i love the box this box is stunning but i'm not i don't think i'm gonna end up keeping this i want to give it a try um, like just doing readings, like an actual reading for myself and, and see, or a reading for someone else and see, because I'm a professional reader and I like to have a variety because I want to be able to pull different decks for different kind of energies and questions and, and stuff like that. And I don't want to rule this out for that purpose necessarily until I've given it a try kind of a thing. So we'll see, but it's on thin ice. Okie dokie. So that is all of the decks that are in my drawer, which is one section where I keep most of my decks. And that gives us a grand total so far of 30 decks that I have in my collection. And this is where I'm going to end this part. And I'm going to finish it with a part three because, because I have two more places to put decks and there's several. So that is it for this video. Uh, all the stuff is normally that is in the bottom is there. You can book my readings, all of that stuff. I don't want to ramble about that because I've been filming for a while, but I'm going to let it go here and I will see you soon. Stay tuned for part three. Lots of love. Bye.